Hey, GBC Youth, uh, just got a little uh, update for you here on camp. Um, over a week ago, I got some communication from Kobiak, and at that time, they are still saying that camp is a go. But then I just found out a day or two ago that the governor of Michigan has really put some crackdown on things in Michigan. So I'm expecting to hear some more this week from Kobiak and find out what is going on with camp. So hang in there on that. Um, did reach out a little bit to find out what who's got access to Zoom or Skype for us all getting together on a video chat. So I uh, got a few people I still need to hear from. So I'd like to uh, get that set up. And right now it looks like Zoom is the most popular one that people have access to. So get back with this on that. Um, also let us know if you have any uh, prayer requests that we can be praying for. Um, I've gotten a few and so uh, yeah, reach out and let us know on that on the Facebook page uh, on Grace, the Gracebook Facebook page. And we will keep that. If it, anything that's on Gracebook is kept just within our church family, it doesn't go out to public. Or if you want to, if you want to text one of us at our numbers, let us know. Uh, feel free to do that if you want. Really private. So anyway, that's all I have. Jonathan's going to be teaching on uh, the first of the Ten Commandments, and I'll turn it over to him. Hello teams, I uh, hope everything is going well with you, uh, as means we're still technically kind of quarantined or, or try, trying to stay away from other people to stay healthy. Uh, I mean, I for one, from the beginning, ain't really that healthy to begin with, with my kidney disease, but I mean, obviously, uh, that just doesn't change for me. I still need to be uh, cautious because I can still get sick just like everybody else. Um, but... Um, like Brian talked about last week, he brought up, he was talking about the Ten Commandments. And uh, if you haven't watched that video, you should probably watch that video first and then come back to this one. Uh, but what I want to talk about is uh, when the Bible talks about the Ten Commandments, uh, we don't really think about a lot of those a lot of times. We don't think about really, uh, the, I mean, if most people, if you go up to them and uh, Ask them, what are the Ten Commandments? They could probably name off three or four of them. But I guarantee a lot of people probably can't even tell you what all the Ten Commandments are. And uh, I granted the Bible in the New Testament uh, sums up the whole Ten Commandments within two commandments. Uh, but it still is a good, the Bible calls it a schoolmaster. It is something to... Uh, to help us, something for us to actually look to. It does, it's still a helpful thing just because the New Testament simplified it does not mean that they're still not useful. Um, but I want, to, I want to talk about uh, in, a, in this book here, uh, what they wrote was very well put. And I want to read that and then give my thoughts on it uh, and then go into a story in the Bible about how serious God is about this thing of uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, the very first commandment that God gives is, was, uh, I believe it was in Exodus 20, verse 3. Uh, it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, meant that the people of Israel were to place no other gods higher than or equal to God. He was to be the only God that they worshipped. Other nations commonly worshipped a host of gods, uh, including a moon god, a sun god, a sky god, a fire god. And a wind god. Some nations worshipped only one god, yet they also believed in the other nation's gods, and that they were really powerful also. Uh, god's first commandment told the people that he is more than just one god among many. He announced to Israel and to the other nations that he is the only god. And I, and I uh, have no doubt that when we when you come here and we teach the lessons, we have constantly preached that, that God is the God and the only God, and he is the one and true God. And that the fact that one day, this is totally different than what we're talking about, but I, I just, I can't, 
I can't help but mention it is the fact that this is a God that one day each and every one of us will stand before and give an account for our life. And it's a very serious issue when we're talking about the one and true God. And the Israelites had just come out of Egypt. The Egyptians worshipped many gods, including a sun god, sky god, and a god of the Nile, and even Pharaoh himself, when Jehovah, announced, or Jehovah God announced himself through Moses to Pharaoh as I am. He was letting Pharaoh and the Egyptians and the Israelites know that he is the supreme God. God continued to demonstrate his supremacy and sovereignty as he sent the plagues. Uh, Brian, last week, talked about some of those plagues. Uh, the Nile, uh, he turned the Nile into blood, defeating the god of the Nile. The sky went black, defeating the sun god. And the sky set forth devastating hail, defeating the sky god. Finally, God defeated Pharaoh himself by taking his firstborn son. God has proven to the Egyptians as well as the, as the Israelites that he is the one true God and the only God worthy of worship. And uh, as, we, as we know uh, what happened, uh, you know, uh, the Israelites were led out of Egypt by Pharaoh. Uh, and we, it, 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 anyone who's read the story knows that that made Pharaoh very, very upset. Uh, the fact that he let the people go, and then as they were to go, he sought to take them out as they were, basically had just obtained their freedom. But they had not been free just yet. And God ended up saving them again. God has done all this, all this for the Israelites, and they, it was all leading up to this one thing of now... Uh, they've gotten free, got, uh, you know, God uh, split the waters, split the Red Sea, and then took out all the Egyptians that were uh, coming to kill them. And then, what, what, honestly, what the main issue, I believe, of their life, of the, of the Israelites, was they lived by sight and not by faith. Uh, and you'll see that multiple times. And I believe, honestly, that's exactly why they had to wander in the wilderness uh, they they constantly live by sight and not by faith. And and uh, one of the stories I want to read here is, is proof of that. Uh, if you turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 32, um, it's a story about after Moses had uh, given the Ten Commandments or had, had, had the, went up to the mountain and got the Ten Commandments from God. And uh, after he got those Ten Commandments, he began to present, he wanted to present them to the people. But what happened when he was in, when he was on the mountain with God, that's what I want to talk about. Because what happened next was proof and the outcome of other people deciding, you know what? Uh, I want to live by faith and not by sight, and it does have its consequences. In Exodus chapter 32 and verses, uh, and we're going to start, we're, just gonna, we're not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to summarize it and read a couple of verses here and there. And then we're going to uh, give, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, we're just going to read verse 3 and 4 starting out. And it said, And all the people break off their golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron, and received them at the hand, and fashioned it with a, gra with a graven tool, with a graving tool, and after he had made it a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So what happened here? You understand what is exactly the, the, the scenery? Moses is up on the mountain, and he is talking with God, and God is giving him the Ten Commandments. And uh, what, what happens here is while they are down, Moses was not on the mountain very long. And what happens is, in that short amount of time, these people decide, we can't see God. All these other gods of Egypt, we have been able to see those. Now, I'm just imagining what they're thinking because uh, for what happens here is they make an image that they can see. And when they make an image they can see, they had God, but they couldn't see him. They seen his works, but that wasn't enough for them. They needed to see an image and so they had done the one thing that God, in the very beginning of the Ten Commandments, commanded not to do. 
and that was to make no other graven images, to have no other gods, no, no, idol, no idols. And uh, that's exactly what they were doing. They were gathering from everybody, all their earrings, their jewelry, their, their jewelry, to make it into this image that they can worship. Now, take it this. They were doing it as a way to worship God, but they were doing it in a way God said, don't do that. That's not how you worship me. And then in verse 7 and 8, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou hast brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. And they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So God is telling Moses that these people have literally uh, made this image. And so he's telling Moses to go down. Now here's one thing that maybe a lot of people don't, re don't realize, is uh, they were doing this as a worship of God, but the whole time God knew they were doing it. And yet maybe they down had no idea that God knew this. God knew they were doing it the wrong way. And a lot of people have a lot of things mixed up when it comes to how they need to worship God, how they need to do this, and yet the Bible is very clear, and God was very clear, to have no other images. And yet, uh, that's exactly what they did. And then if we turn to verse 25 through 28, it says, And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto the shame of their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? We've heard, I've heard messages preached on that. Who was on the Lord's side? And maybe God is asking you this question. Who is on the, who's, he's asking today, who's on the Lord's side? And if we will answer, we will, we will uh, obey him by our actions, not by our words. Our words relatively almost mean nothing if we don't have actions to back them up. But he said he, he said, let, let him come unto me, and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. So these were men that had just been trying to, you know, they were basically worshiping an image together. And God split them up. Moses told them that hey, whoever was going to follow the Lord's saying, come over here. And they separated. And then the ones that decided not to follow God, they were killed. Because they decided to worship an image that was not God. God is very serious about this thing of worshiping him. He's worthy of worship and he demands worship. The fact that he is so holy and no other, no other God mentioned in the Bible besides him is worthy and as holy as he is. Now the things, now a lot of the things that happen in the Old Testament, God really doesn't do them today. He doesn't go out and just start outright, at least maybe he does, but we don't see it. Um, but there, the, the same God of the Old Testament is the same God of today, the same God of the New Testament. And we have to understand that God is, is if he was this serious in this story, he is that serious about the, the area of idolatry today. And there's many things that, that can become our God. And whatever is our God is what we put in place of him. Uh, a car can be a god. A, uh, your internet can be a god. Uh, any type of hobby that you have can be a god. Anything in today's day and age, this right here, can be a god. In fact, it's a lot of people's gods today because they can't get their face out of this phone enough to give God time. And uh, if your life is more of, I'll find time for this when I can... Instead of, I'll find time for this when I can. Makes the difference a whole lot in how your life is. And we can tell how your life is by which one you put first. 
Anybody, I believe, can tell. And this is the main thing, what we've learned about in the verses before. God knows. God's the one. You can't hide. You can't pull a wool over God's eyes. God knows everything. And uh, when it comes to this, this thing of idolatry, like I said, anything can become a God. Those things that can become a God and we put before God, those are the things God's very serious about. And, uh, and, and it's just one of those things that God's, like I said, God's very serious about. But the thing is about people lost their lives because God was so serious about this thing of idolatry. And there's many, there's multiple times that maybe God will have a, a word with us in our prayer time. And when maybe we'll go ask for forgiveness for it and we'll turn around and write our head and do it. Uh, but in this story, God says a phrase and says something about that he wants his, his anger is kindled against them. And he wants to consume them. And it's not necessarily them in general. It is the sin in which they commit. It irritates God. It, 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 it basically makes God want to just, he, he makes him angry. He hates it. Uh, for one, these very things, each, each thing that we do when it comes to sin was the very thing that put Jesus Christ on the cross. And yet, there are sins that God has uh, sent his son to pay for, and yet we still do. It's one of those things we need to understand how we need to get our life together. Uh, and one of those things, how to start, is to put God first. Not second, not if I have time. But put God first because he's worthy of our worship. Uh, God needs to be number one. He demands to be number one. And he's worthy to be number one. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this day you've given us. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, we know that by your word and by experience that you are the one true holy God that is worthy of worship. And worthy of our praise. Uh, Brian talked about last week about David and his psalms and, and all the things that he said about you. Uh, psalms proves more than anything that you are worthy of worship, not to the point of saying it, but doing it. And Lord, I think that's what make, will make all the difference in our lives is we can talk about it, I can preach about putting you number one and worshiping you, but until we actually do it, it does no good. So Lord, bring us back next week. Hope everyone is uh, okay and safe. Lord, be with all the teens. And in your name I pray. Amen.